This review is presented by Koza MC, the unofficial Ratchet and Clank community manager. He's been really wanting me to shout his Twitter out, so there you go, I just shouted it out. Go follow him, the link is in the description. He's a cool dude, he's from the United Kingdom, so that means he's smarter than us. Go and follow him, the, the link is in the description, and also enjoy the review. Uh, there's no intro this time because I had to put this as the intro, so enjoy the review for Infamous Festival of Blood. Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to Gore's Month of War number 14, and this time I am looking at the new DLC for Infamous 2. This is actually a standalone DLC, which means you don't need the original game to play it. This is Festival of Blood, which is of course a horror tie-in to Infamous 2. That means it has a, a bunch of horror themes, has the main character turning into a vampire and having to deal with a bunch of vampires in a setting called Pier Night. Of course, the game itself is set in a place called New Morays and has to do with a character that acquires electric powers and has to fight off this thing called the Beast. And I don't want to get into the plot of the actual game. But, let's talk about the plot of this DLC. The plot of this DLC has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with Infamous 1 or 2. Besides that you have the main two characters, Cole McGroff, the character you play as, and his friend Zeke. Who, they're both two great characters, I'm just going to say it straight off. They're great characters, I really like both of them. I didn't like either one of them in the first game, but I love them in Infamous 2. I thought they had a great camaraderie, I, I thought they... You know, they definitely seem like they cared for each other. They're friends, but you know, they're more brothers than friends. You know, actual brothers, not like fucking, hey, I'm your brother because I'm your best friend. You know, no, they felt like brothers. They don't look brothers. <laughs> I mean, one's a fat Elvis guy, you know, has Elvis hair, and one's a, a bald biker dude with electric power, so, you know, no resemblance, but uh, they felt like it. And they're great characters. And in this game, Cole McGrath is just investigating some place, and out of nowhere, a vampire comes and bites him. You know, just just like any other day. Uh, and he turns into a vampire, of course. But before that, these vampires pretty much drain him of some blood. And he's getting drained of blood on, t on pretty much hovering over this corpse of some old woman, of course. And the blood drops onto her and she revives. This girl is known as Bloody Mary, who in around the town... Uh, is known as Bloody Mary, actually, but uh, she's a, known to be a sadistic vampire killer, but she was always a myth, and of course she's not, she's real, and now you have to stop her, and of course that means you're a vampire, so you have to do this before sunrise, or you'll be trapped as a vampire forever, because the only way to become a human again, if you're a vampire, is to kill the one that turns you into a uh, vampire before the first night ends. So... That's the plot. So you, it's it's a really short DLC. It's about two and a half to three hours long. You have a few missions to do and some side missions and a bunch of stuff you can do in the you know small part of the city that you get. I think you get one third of the city in this DLC. It's only ten bucks, and I gotta say it's a lot of fun. It really is. All the powers you get in the game, some of them are new, some of them are old, but they're a lot of fun to play with. Uh, also, you're a vampire, so that means you could drain people of life throughout the city so if you need some blood because of course you need a, you have a blood meter uh, you could just drain them of blood it's a lot of fun it really is what you use the blood for you get a bunch of different abilities like some of them you can like whiz by and go f really fast and fly in the air with a bunch of bats that hover around it makes sense when you play the game uh, it's actually the only ability to be honest there's one where you can fly around with a bat or you can fly into someone and stake them. Also you can stake other vampires that are around because in this game you don't have the amp in the original which is his melee weapon. You have a cross and you can stake uh, vampires and of course get trophies and upgrades to your electric abilities and so on and so on. So I'm gonna say this, the combat is a lot of fun. It is. You know jumping around, jumping on rooftops and stuff, hovering. It's all awesome, it is. Infamous 2 is a great freaking game. I love Infamous 2, I think the story is fantastic, but I will say this. The story in this game, although likable, I really like the characters and stuff, it's forgettable. You know what's going to happen, you know? Of course, it's just a side story, so it's just there to for you to have fun with. So, it's not a great story, like Infamous 2's, you know, I had a lot of unpredictable parts in Infamous 2 at least. Infamous 1 didn't really play the whole game, but uh, Infamous 2 had a lot of unpredictable parts. This predictable, 
but a lot of fun. The story is a lot of fun. The gameplay is a lot of fun. The game will last you about three hours, maybe a little bit longer because you have other additions like the move controls. If you have a move, uh, you can try those out. They're a lot of fun. Uh, they actually work really good. I actually tried it out, and uh, I, I, I really enjoyed it. Um, you also have the user-generated create uh, uh, user-generated missions that uh, many people out there create missions and you try them out. And in this game, I heard you can make your own comic book panels or something like that. I did not try this out, but you can actually make your own user-created uh, like comic books. I mean, comic book panels. I'm pretty sure it's like this. You have a already made panel and you put in your own dialogue or something. Then you start the mission. From what I heard, that's what you can do. And that seems really cool. But I'm terrible at doing the user-generated content missions because uh, the UGC, as they call it. But uh, because I'm just... I'm terrible. I, I don't take time and stuff. I just make terrible missions. It's horrible. I, I, I'm bad at it, but I can see how people would love it. So you got a lot of stuff here for 10 bucks. So if you're a PSN Plus member, you get it for 8 bucks, which I am. You know, I had a free trial, so I used it, and I got it for 8 bucks. So overall, I think it's a very fun DLC. It will last you for a little while. If you love Infamous 2, definitely give it a shot. The story is not fantastic, but pretty much everything else is a lot of fun. I will say this, though. Uh, the end boss is very frustrating because they just keep throwing vampires at you over and over again. And some of these vampires can shoot you and throw stakes at you and stuff. It's really annoying. But everything else was a lot of fun. So anyway, there you go. There's my review for Infamous 2's uh, first standalone DLC, Festival of Blood. I will give it a straight up 4.00 out of a 5 or just a 4 out of 5. It's a fun little DLC. So anyway, there you go. There's my review. Also, if you want to check it out, I did a whole playthrough of the DLC, so I did all all the campaign missions and stuff, and I also did the move compatible stuff, you know, I just tried it out. I filmed it, and if you want to watch all that stuff, it's actually on um, my other channel, I'll link it in the description, it'll be the first thing you see. If you want to watch the whole thing or just watch a little bit of it, go ahead. Anyway, there you go, there's my review for the new Infamous DLC, thank you, and goodbye.